when you're out at Half Moon Bay surfing giant Pacific waves. What you're really doing is mastering real life physics. Of course, everyone knows that. Hey everybody, Trace here for DNews with special guest Debbie Barabiche from Outrageous Acts of Science on the Science Channel. Hey Debbie, how's it going? Hi. Debbie's got a PhD in physics and is an expert on waves. So where do you find waves in California, man? Surfing. Waves are found everywhere in nature. They're just wiggles or oscillations of something. Water waves, for example, are big surges of energy that travel vast distances through the ocean and transport their energy through water molecules. Sound, in contrast, is pressure waves that travel from our vocal cords pushing air molecules in waves, transporting our voice from the ears of one person to the ears of another. And light waves are a third example of waves and they're wiggles of electric and magnetic fields. The special thing about light waves is that they can travel in vacuum. Hmm. So they don't need a medium like air or water to arrive at our eyes. Okay, so if I'm standing on a beach and I see the waves coming in and they're hitting the sand and it looks like the water is moving on to the shore, but obviously it's not because it's not like it's just piling up there. So what's going on? Where is that wave going? That's a good question because ocean waves can actually reach heights of about 100 feet, but not all of that body of water hits the shore. So what's happening is that local volumes of water are actually moving up and down in a circular motion as the wave energy is transported all the mm. way to the shore but no one group of molecules is traveling the full distance of the entire wave. The waves are just on the surface. Scientifically speaking, they're orbital progressive waves. So when they hit the shore, the last bit of energy hits the shore and the energy dissipates on the sand. Okay, so that makes sense. And the waves are being generated by meteorological forces, astronomical forces, even earthquakes, which produce tsunamis, and then that energy is going through, and so people can jump on it and do some surfing. So when people are using their boards, they're riding the surface of fluid dynamics. <laughs> That's beautifully said. When you're lying on your board in still water, waiting for the next wave, there are two important forces at work. There's gravity and buoyancy. Gravity is pulling every atom of yourself down towards the center of the Earth, with your center of gravity being the point where you're balanced. Buoyancy, on the other hand, is an upward force created by the still water pushing on the board. The most important thing for a beginning surfer is to learn how to balance. When gravity and buoyancy are balanced, everything is good and you're stable. Slide backwards on your board though, and the downward force of gravity moves behind the upward buoyant force, it creates a torque, and there you go. That's the tough part, that's the hard part. I have to keep my center of gravity over the board and only move just a little bit at a time and too much and my forces get misaligned and I'm in the water. The torque you're putting into the board makes it rotate until gravity and buoyancy are balanced back again. So by shifting your weight relative to your center of mass, you can eventually learn to balance these forces and slide right through. So once you learn how to do that, you can master surfing some pretty amazing waves. Man, even the coolest of sports just has some science behind it, but what are your feelings on sports science? Super cool or something else? Tell us your thoughts on Facebook and Google+. And Debbie, thanks for coming to DNews today. Thank you. Where can people find you if they want to know more? You can watch me on Outrageous Acts of Science on the Science Channel and also follow me on Twitter at Debbie Barry. See you later.